In this video, we'll be taking a look at a new feature that's recently been added to dynamic content for Elementor. Now, if you've used that option to dynamically generate PDF files in the past, well, there may be a time where you wanted to get someone to sign that document. Well, now you're in luck if that's something you're looking for. The new signature feature that plugs into Elementor Pro Form widget may be the answer for you. Now, before we take a look though, I just need to let you know that this is a sponsored video by Dynamic Content for Elemental. So I won't be giving you any opinions on anything that I cover. But if you like what you see and you wanna find out more, the link's in the description. Okay, so that's all the legal stuff out of the way. Let's just jump in now and take a look at how we're gonna cover in this video. So this is just basically a setup project approval form. This could be for any reason. It could be for lots of different reasons. You could be creating a custom dashboard and you want to have clients approve various different things with their signature. This is going to be a great option. So this is just a typical Elementor Pro form, but we've got the extra field that's supplied by Dynamic Content for Elementor that allows us to input a custom digital signature, which we can sign off on screen. So what we're going to do is just test this out. Just put my name in, drop my email address in, and finally, we'll just draw in our signature. This isn't my signature, but it'll give you an idea. Hit save on there to confirm it, and we'll just click on approve project, and then we get notified to say the form has been sent successfully. Now, because this is just a typical default Elemental Pro form, we could very easily have this do anything after that form is submitted. So you could have it go to a separate page to say thank you very much, all those kinds of things. So now we've done that, the next thing, let's take a look at what we actually receive from the form. So once that form has been successfully submitted, you'll see we get an email to the recipient and inside there we get the name, the email address, which is what we saw in the normal form. And we also get a digital copy of the signature with the approval. I've also set this up so you get a subject that says who has actually submitted the form. So this is project approved by Paul C in this example, which is what's inserted into the name field. So it's really easy to do. And I'm gonna take you through and show you how to do all of that in this video. Okay, so for this to work the way we need to, we need a couple of things. We need Elemental Pro installed because we need access to the form field options. And that is where Dynamic Content for Elementor, the plugin we're gonna be using today, links into to give you these extra custom fields. In this example, the signature field. So I've come into my pages and we're gonna add a new page and we're gonna build exactly what I've just shown you. So we're just gonna call this project approval. And what we'll do is we'll just publish this and then we'll edit with Elementor. Once Elementor opens up, we can then insert our form, set up any styling we want to do, all those kinds of things. So I'm gonna quickly disable the label on there and we're gonna just add in a new section. So for this, we wanna drop in, first of all, a title. We'll drop that in there and we're gonna do another widget and we're just gonna drop in the option for a form. So we'll drop that underneath our heading and there we go. So we've now got what we need in there. We'll worry about styling it a little later. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this message field. So I'm going to just delete that from there and I'm going to set the name and the email to be 50% width each just so our form doesn't look quite so overpowering. I'm also going to disable the labels because I don't really like those in there. Okay, so once we've done that, nothing that you haven't probably already seen a thousand times. We're going to add a new item and we're going to change the type from text, scroll down and we're going to find some new fields and the one we are looking for is the signature option. Once we put that inside there, we've now got the signature field set up. We can drop in any labels we want to, all those kinds of things. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give this a label and we're gonna call this signature. I'm gonna to go to advanced and we're gonna give this a unique, unique ID. And again, we're gonna call this signature. Now we need to make sure we know exactly what we call these fields because we're gonna reference those in a little bit and that will tell it how we want things to integrate into our new signature field. Okay, so that's the first part done. We've created the signature field, but how do we get that to work? Well, there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to come down to the actions after submit, and this is where we tell the form what to do when that submit button is clicked. At the moment, you can see it's set to default as email, and that's fine, we're gonna use the email option, but we need to augment that with another option. So our extra action, we're gonna scroll through until we find the option for PDF. So if we open up the PDF option, you can see we've got some basic options inside there. And we're gonna leave those as they are. I'm not gonna worry about the date and the folder and so on, I can stay as it is. What I'm interested in is the PDF pages. And we're gonna add an item inside here. So we're gonna add an item, and this is now asking for some SVG code. 
So what exactly are they talking about? Well, to get this form signature field to link up and allow us to draw in there and then output that, we need an SVG graphic field. And this is what we're going to use to create the sort of content and the various aspects of this email. Again, this might sound confusing, but stick with me because once you see how it all works, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. Now, where do we get the actual SVG code from? Well, you could use various different tools, anything that allows you to work with SVGs. So things like Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer. But if you don't have access to those, what options do you have? Well, luckily enough, on the dynamic.oo website, they've got an SVG editor. And this just allows you to do the basics of what you need to get everything set up the way you want it to. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop in some links to the actual fields we're going to be using, and then we'll deal with the signature in a moment. So let's build the layout now for our email. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just simply drop a logo in just so we've got something to brand this up. And I'll just drop that into the top corner. OK, so there's the first part. Next thing we need to reference some dynamic content. To do that is quite easy. We're going to simply click to insert a text area and we're going to put a little bit of a short code in. Now, don't worry if you don't know what these short codes are or you've never used them. If we just hop back over into our dashboard and we just go back to our form and we come to our form fields, we simply need to know the name of the field we want to reference. So if we open up name, for example, we can see if we go to advanced under the ID section, there's the name of this form field. So all we need to do is note that down come back into the SVG editor and we're going to open up square brackets, type in form, put a full colon in, and we're going to put in the name of that field or that ID of that field, in this case, name. So we can now duplicate this if we want to, or we can just insert it back in by using this option. So we'll click add another one in and we're going to do the same thing again, form, full colon, and this time email is the second field. So we've now set up the actual short codes for two of those field labels, the two that we have. So the next thing we need to do is include the signature option. So this is going to be just an ever so slightly different, but you can keep repeating this and lay this out however you want for your form. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're just going to select a square or rectangle and we're going to drop a area inside here that's going to be used for our signature area. OK, that's it. That's all you need to do to put the signature shape inside there. We just need to give this an ID. So we hop back over into our dashboard, open our signature option up, come over to advanced. There's the ID signature. So I can copy that from there. If I want to save time, make sure we make no spelling mistakes, come back into our SVG editor. And up in the top right hand corner, we can give this an ID. So let's just click inside there, remove anything that's in there. And we're just going to type in the word form colon, and we'll just paste in the name of it, which is signature. We don't need to use the square brackets this time. We just need to put form colon and the name of that field. And that's it. We've now created the form that we need with all the elements in there so we can use the signature field and everything else that's associated with our current form. So all we need to do now is come over to view and we can choose source. And inside there, you can see there's all the source code for this SVG. So we're going to copy that going to come back over into our dashboard and we're simply going to come over into the PDF option expand that out, scroll down to where we put our PDF pages, open that up, and we're simply just going to paste in that SVG code. That's basically done. So we can hit update on there just to make sure we save those changes. Now we just need to make sure that the email is going to be sent to the right place and all the other things that we need are in place. So we'll come back to our email, make sure that everything inside there is fine. We're going to personalize the subject and we're just going to say form approval by and then we're going to come back to our form fields, going to go to our name, go to advanced, grab this little short code, and then we can go back into our email, back to our subject, and we're just going to paste that inside there. And this is the beauty of using the forms inside Elementor. We can use any of these short codes for lots and lots of different purposes. All we need to do is go into the different form field that we want into advanced, and we can just copy that short code and use that in lots of different places. OK, so that's those side of things done. Now, let's just quickly apply a little bit of styling to this to make it look just a little bit more presentable. For speed, I've already gone ahead and copied the styling for our form. So I'm just going to paste that style onto there. There we go. And we'll just add a little bit of spacing around this. So we'll just drop in some 50 pixels, top and bottom. And then we're just going to just style this out as well. So we'll change the color of this to a secondary color and we'll just adjust the weight 
and set it to uppercase. I'll actually give it a heading. So we're just going to say approve project. And there we go. So we'll update that. And providing everything else is now in place, we can test this out and see how it all works. So let's just fill our approval form out. So again, Paul C, I'll drop in my email address again. And there we go. There's our email come in with our signature and our details on there. Now, the eagle-eyed among you may notice that we don't actually get the logo and so on that we set up when I created the SVG file. And that's because what we're kind of having is two sides to this whole setup. You've got a PDF that's being created and that's being saved on the server. And we've got the email that's being sent out with the details in that are kind of basically the same info. So how would we go about actually including the PDF as part of our actual email? Well, we just need to change a few things and then we can get that all set up. Now, at the moment, if we come into the action after submit, we've got email set up inside there, and that's using the built-in email options as part of Elementor. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to add a new option in, and we're going to scroll down until we get to dynamic email. Now, this is part of dynamic content for Elementor, and it works in a fairly similar kind of way, but it gives you a load more options. So what you can do is if we open this up, you can see there's an item inside there. Now, if you don't see this, you can just click the add item and it'll give you exactly the same thing. And you can stack items on top of each other. You don't have to have just one. If we open this up, you can see this is just like we have as part of Elementor, but we have more options inside here. We've got conditions if we want to, so we can specify various different conditions that have to be met before something will happen. I don't want to go into that in too much detail because I think that's going off on a little bit of a tangent. But what you will see is we can do the subject like we normally could. We can use dynamic tags if we want to inside you. So let's just change this over now, and we're just going to call this approval from and we'll do the same as we did before we'll simply come back out to our form fields and inside there we can see there's the name coming to advanced and we can grab that info from this so we'll copy that from there go back down to our dynamic emails open this up and we'll drop that inside there so that will now personalize the subject field but what we have underneath is we can send this as html or plain text we can also use predefined templates. So we could build a template if we wanted to. For this example, we're not going to worry about that. We want to use the message option set as HTML. And now we've got a normal editor inside you where we can create and craft our email using HTML. Okay, so let's just build out our email now. And what we can do is we can use the same kind of options we have as part of Elementor, which is the all fields option. So you just put that inside here. So we can do all dash fields, and that will then include all of the fields that are part of our form, which is the quick and easy way of doing things. But we want to link up the PDF that's created. So to do that, we're going to hop over to the text section, and we're going to just drop in a little bit of simple HTML. So we're going to just create a normal href link. So we'll do href equals open and close. We'll close that down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close that out. And now we can drop in the information that we want to use inside here. So the first thing we want to do is put the actual path to the file we want to include. Now to do that, we're going to use a simple shortcode. And for that, we're just going to come into here and we're going to paste it in. And our shortcode is effectively open brackets, square bracket, form, full colon, PDF, full colon, URL, close the square bracket. So this is like a kind of token. And if you've never seen the tokens when it comes to working with dynamic content for Elementor, there's a video to that and I'll link that in the description below. But all you really need to know is that's what you need to use to grab the URL for the form PDF that we're creating as part of this overall form. And then what we can do is we can just drop in the information we want to place inside here. So we say download PDF. We'll update that. And we've now created our custom form. If we switch back over to visual, you can see that now is a link. So we can see that's a link dynamically created and populated from the PDF that will be created as part of this whole process. So let's test this out now. So I've refreshed the form. Nothing looks any different. It's just what's going on behind the scenes. So again, we'll just put this in. So we'll put Paul. We'll put in brackets test so we know this is a new one. And again, my email and my signature. Save that and click send. So now our form has been sent and we should receive the email. The PDF should be created in the background. And also we should have that then attached to our email. So we can now take a look at what the PDF looks like. And there's the email. You can see there's approval from Paul test, which is the email address. I see the name that I used on there. Everything is set up. You can see there's our name, our info, email, signature, and our download PDF. So we can click on that. That will then download the PDF and there's our logo. There's the information again that's dynamically been passed over and the signature. 
So this is a fairly simplistic example of the kind of thing you can do using the PDF option, signature option, all those kinds of things in dynamic content for Elementor. This is just a basic idea. You could use this for so many different purposes. You could create a simple front end dashboard where you have project approvals. You could create a quoting system where you want the client to approve the quote, all these different things you could set up and then you can use these features to build that out, flesh it out, and have it dynamically generate all the info you need, generate the emails, the PDF, attach them to your emails, so many cool things. So now you've seen how easy it is to add digital signatures to your online forms, what use cases could you see yourself using this for? I think this would be a great way to get clients to sign contracts or proposals, and with a little creativity, you could easily add this feature into a custom dashboard listing, all of your clients' agreements and so on. If this is something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments section, and if enough are interested, I'll take a look at creating some content on it. Now, as always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. If you made it this far into the video, well, why not give the thumbs up button a click? It really does help the channel out and while you're at it if you like the content why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon but if you didn't get value from the video though well feel free to hit that thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too my name is paul c this is wp tuts and until next time take care